So back in part one, I mentioned that one of the reasons why writing is so difficult is that at every point in your writing, there is a vast range of possibilities in terms of subject matter, in terms of structure, in terms of style, sentence construction, and word choice, all of which require decisions. So today, I'd like to deal with structure. And this is something that's often neglected in favor of just getting words down on the page. But if you understand some guiding principles, then it'll help you to make decisions as you write. And if you master these principles, you can write a pretty good first draft quite quickly. So to do this, we need to think about how the ideas link together, about the relationships between them and how one idea can lead to another. And these relationships between ideas can be roughly broken down into causes and effects or consequences, problems, questions or needs, and responses, and goals, actions, and results. Now, there is some overlap between these. So for example, a problem could be a consequence of something else, or a goal could be to solve a problem. So don't worry too much about the exact divisions between these categories, because they're basically variations on the same idea that one thing leads to another. So how does this work in academic writing? So if you're writing a research paper, you can think of the whole thing as a response to a problem or question. And you can structure it something like this. So first you present a problem, and then you can say how other people have responded to the problem in the past. So what's been reported in the literature in terms of prior responses to the, to the problem. However, there's got to be a need to do something different. So maybe there's a problem with the prior approaches or a limitation or a gap that needs to be addressed. And then this current paper responds to this need by taking some kind of action, which gives certain results. But it often leads to more questions, more open questions, or perhaps new avenues for future research. So this structure, at each stage, it sets up the next, creating a natural flow from one idea to another and making it much easier for the reader to follow. And the beauty of this idea is that it doesn't just give you a structure for the whole thesis or paper, but it can apply to individual subsections of writing too. So let's take the method section as an example and see how we can apply this kind of structure. So we start with a general need. So we need a way of measuring something or gathering data or um, getting some kind of evidence. Now there might be a standard technique for doing this or a standard response to this need, in which case you can just say, in order to measure X, we use technique Y. So we have the need for a way of measuring X and the response is technique Y. It's nice and simple. But in most projects, you will have to make specific decisions about exactly how you implement or modify the techniques that you use. It's not usually as simple as just saying you use this technique. And those decisions that you make about the implementation or modification of the techniques, those decisions will be responses to the specific needs or constraints of your specific project. So the structure can go something like this. So in order to answer some question, we need a way of measuring X. Typically, or the typical response, is to do this using technique Y. However, technique Y was developed for, um, let's say, some specific set of conditions, whereas this specific project has some other conditions that mean the original technique can't be used in its original form. Therefore, we use a modified version of technique Y with these particular variations. So by structuring in this way, 
the reader understands the need for a modified technique before you actually present that modified technique. So the modified technique is presented as a response to the need or the problem that you set up. Now, obviously it can get a bit more complicated and there may be a lot of different elements that you have to cover, but this way of structuring information still works. And the skill comes in knowing how to adapt the structure to link different ideas together in a natural flow. And like any skill, it takes a bit of practice, but once you get it, everything else gets easier. So it's easier to make decisions as you write the first draft because the problems or needs or questions that you set up give you a point of focus. And it also gives you kind of a framework for deciding what to leave out when there are things that don't fit into a particular structure. And also, if you structure things this way from the start, it becomes much, much easier to edit. So if your writing has no structure at all, if you've just been putting words down on the page, then because there's no structure, you have no point of reference for making changes or moving sections around. It's just this big tangled mess of ideas and disconnected insights. And so when you want to move a section, how do you know where to put it if all of the rest of the structure is a mess? But if you have a clear structure, then you can make decisions about where an idea should go relative to the structure that is already there. So, as I said, it does take a little bit of practice. So if you would like to know more about this, check out this lecture that I gave a few years ago, which I'll also link to below. And for a step-by-step -step guide, taking you through each chapter and how to approach it, check out my academic writing course, which I'll also link to below. So that's all from me, and I'll see you next time.